this tutorial, we will look at some additional examples and how to approach the easy to use controls so you can apply what you learn in this tutorial to similar scenarios. For information and understanding the basic controls of Denoise, please watch the Denoise Part 1 tutorial called Denoise Essential Info. Let's take a look at this first example. This is a noisy video blue screenshot. We can pull a key, but with a noisy blue screen, we will get a noisy result. If we apply denoise prior to pulling the key, you can see that we will get a much cleaner result. Let's look at the effect control settings so you can see which settings I used. I used the spatial noise reduction set to smarter blur with the spatial radius set to 2 and the spatial threshold at 20%. The temporal process mode is set to average and the temporal quality is set to best forward warp and the temporal threshold percentage is also set to 20. Here is the before and after of this shot and keying it with and without denoise. Now let's see an issue that is very common at weddings or when watching a band in low light. We have a noisy shot with a random flash frame like this where the flash doesn't expose the whole image. We can use the min mode to easily remove the flash from this frame by animating it from none to min and back to none. In Final Cut Pro or any of the other applications that don't have animating menus, we can animate the threshold instead from 0 to 100 and back to 0 as a workaround. We will get the same result. If the flash exposes the whole frame, then this method won't work and we would use a different method which we will cover in the next example. If the flash is exposing an entire frame like this, we need to approach it in a different way so we don't end up with artifacts and warping at the flash frame or cut point. We want to use mark segments to eliminate the spillover of the flash into the surrounding frames by marking them as different cuts of the sequence. Basically the setting allows you to identify the first frame of a sequence in a clip where the shots are not segmented so a frame from another shot is not mixed in with a frame from the current shot. This could be a cut between two different shots that may have two different noise patterns or perhaps a big flash frame that results in a lot of overexposed pixels, like this. Denoise will not blend frames between two segments marked with different cut settings. For example, if one frame is marked as part of cut A and the next frame is marked as part of cut B, then denoise for that frame will not interpolate between the two so we'll only use two frames. If your application does not support animated menus like Final Cut Pro, Motion, Final Cut Express, and Nuke, you will have a setting that allows you to specify a cut number, either one or two. Important note, if you decide to animate this setting, make sure on the first segment to set keys of value one on the first and last frames of the first segment. Then on the second segment, set keys of value two on the first and last frames of the second segment. Then for the third segment, set keys of value 1 on the first and last frames of the third segment. Keep alternating between 1 and 2 for each successive segment. This next option is not currently available in the OFX version. If your footage has fields, you have the option of looking up the previous field or the same field at a previous frame. For a static shot with the temporal option, it might not be better to use the field button even if you have fields. We can see that there are video fields on this shot with intense noise in the dark areas. Let's see how we would set this up to get a good result. Let's go to frame 57 for now and set spatial blur to none. We can set temporal threshold to 100% and set the fields checkbox. We can set quality from medium to best forward warp and see that the wheels are clean now. We can see on the before and after of this shot that we have a much nicer result. In this last example we can see how to deal with footage that has very little dynamic range. It looks flat. 
we can raise the contrast in the pre-process and then select undo in the post-process and it reverts back to what you started with. In this shot we can raise the contrast in the post-contrast because after using a large spatial radius our details became a little milky so this will bring some of the contrast back. This was an overview of some of how and when to use some of the more advanced features in Denoise and how to approach these different scenarios.